Hi everyone, it's 19 Minutes with Joseph Hall. I'm Joseph Hall, the Executive Director at the Kelly Strayhorn Theater. And today I'll be joined uh, by Tara Aisha Willis. And I think she's in here, so I'm gonna add her. Hello. Hello. Hi, how's it going? It's going well, how are you? I'm good, I'm enjoying the occasion for putting on makeup and <laughs> <laughs> Right? Yeah, it's nice to have uh, a reason to just get up, put on your best clothes, your best face. Yeah, that's right. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Of course. It's my pleasure. I'm really excited you're uh, doing this in your yeah. first months of this new role. That's right. That's right. Um, so for everyone who's just joined us, this is 19 Minutes with Joseph Hall. Uh, 19 that we reclaim from COVID-19 and take these 19 minutes to really touch base with other arts leaders um, around the country and around the world. Um, before I formally welcome Tara, I want to um, give you a visual and identity description. Um, so I, again, I'm Joseph Hong, the executive director of the Kelly Strayman Theater. I am maybe a light-skinned, um, cisgender, black, queer man. Um, I am in my home, which is pretty airy and light, with light gray walls, and behind me you'll see maybe a refrigerator. <laughs> um, I'm in my kitchen, but uh, looking back at my living room. Uh, so I want to welcome Tara Aisha Willis, who is a dancer and a PhD candidate in performance studies at New York University, and she is an associate curator in performance and public practice at the Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago. So I'll kick it nice to you, to Tara. Here. Yeah, um, it's really great to be here with you all. Um, I'm Tara, and I am also a light-skinned cisgender <laughs> uh, person. Um, I am. Uh, I identify as a woman. I have curls that are currently put away because they need to be washed in a <laughs> bun at the top of my head, um, wooden earrings, um, and I'm right in front of my sort of wall of various artwork a lot of the zoom calls i've been on everyone's like positioning themselves in front of their walls of artwork to, <laughs> to be more artistic than perhaps any of us really are yes. um <laughs> yes so i think there's some laser eyed cats behind me and uh, an old uh you know festival brochure framed and all that so that's me um it's yeah. yeah, it's it's really all about the background. I think we're all becoming yes. like set designers or something in this moment. I know. And yeah. framing it, you know, in depending on which screen, which uh, platform you're using at which time and all of that. So yes, yeah, I'm actually always surprised by the Instagram frame. I always expect more to show in the background. So I've actually uh -huh. done a lot of work uh, for nothing. <laughs> you know, <right? laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> So thanks so much, Tara, for joining um, us on 19 Minutes. And just to give folks a little bit of background, when I was in New York, I really think maybe I met you through Jasmine Hearn. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, I, you know, Jasmine was um, dancing in a piece that I was working on for a few years, actually worked together. And, um, and then at some point I left to take this job in Chicago. Um, but you know, it's also New York is such a scene where you are all at the same shows all the time and, you know, running into people over and over, even if you don't know them that well. So I think we were in that boat for a while. And of course, Bad, your role at Bad. Um, That's right. I, I'm sure I came to shows and, and saw you in those contexts. Um, I saw Juma Tatu, Poe was on here. I don't know if Juma's still on here, but that's definitely a show I probably came to see at Bad and, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, shout out to Juma Tatu. Thanks for joining. Um, so I always want to start with checking in with you. I want to know how you are doing. Yeah, that is such a big question right now. <laughs> um, I think, you know, the prevailing mood is uncertainty, I would say. I think that's probably true for a lot of people. Um, you know, there's a lot I feel really grateful for also. You know, mm -hmm. I have, a, compared to so many folks, um, such a um, comfortable situation right now, considering everything, you know, I, three years ago before I took this job would not have been, you know, as comfortable. I, you know, there's a, a reality to being an artist right now that's really, really harsh. And, um, and so I'm really appreciating just, you know, the way the, the networks and community and the field is, 
in the place in the spaces and places where we are banding together and supporting mm -hmm. artists and technicians and whatnot. I'm really appreciating that. And um, so there's a lot of gratitude for family and um, my cozy apartment and things like that, you know, um, and my job and my coworkers. Um, but yeah, a lot of uncertainty. I think that, you know, fear is, is really real for, for all of us right now to some degree, regardless of, of, of what exact situation we're in. Um, I'm really trying to navigate also this question of labor that comes up in arts admin all the time. And it's so discombobulated right now because like time doesn't exist anymore. And like, a work day is kind of an odd thing right now and all yep. that. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you said, um, you mentioned three years ago, it may not have been the same for you. And, you know, I just want to point out again that, you know, you are an artist um, and you're also working inside an institution, um, which is, I think, a, you know, a lot of um, arts administrators, realities, uh, cultural yeah. workers that at, at some point, you know, they were regularly practicing artists or still are. Um, and with that, you know, you have kind of um, uh, uh, various communities, uh, you have um, various kind of uh, touching stones. Um, so I wanna ask, you know, how is the MCA Chicago community, but also realizing that you have many communities mm. um, and that you've been at MCA for three years now? Just about. Yeah. 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 Um, that's a, that's a really great question. I, you know, um, in terms of my networks, which include the MCA, but are bigger than the MCA, I feel like, you know, um, one of my challenges has always been being in this role has always been that I'm, you know, suddenly taking this job grow was growing my sort yeah. of curatorial administrative network like exponentially within a really short period of time um, as well as my artist network actually just because of um, connecting through being able to travel to festivals and see shows in other places suddenly um, but that those connect some of those connections are a different shape than the connections I had in New York before just because I was I'm now in this role and that's the the reason that I'm, you know, connected to some of these folks now, yeah. um, as opposed to being a peer in the studio, you know, or whatever. Um, so, which is all, you know, well and good. Um, but I feel like, you know, really um, watching folks grapple with what's going on right now, I think, um, you know, even though like my finances are not that great, <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> like, but I also feel this real important um, responsibility as someone who is in this position uh, of power, of access to resources, or rather the access to like dole out resources in some way mm -hmm. to find sort of, to do my best effort at sort of ethical strategies for that. And so, for example, you know, there's been actually, I'm doing a lot of my job still, and it has a whole new shape, but there's also a lot of like trying to do organizing work with folks around ethics for cancellations and postponement, you know, even though in some cases I can't always do the best version of what I'd like that to be in, you know, in, in my institution, just because of the budgets and stuff yep. like that. And, you know, I'm, I'm not actually at the top of the ladder and all that. So, you know, I think that, you know, what I was saying about really being grateful for the networks as we're supporting each other, I think there's, there's a, a space of like really figuring out a new what these networks can do that only comes up when we're in an emergency situation. And that's obviously terrible, but I'm also feeling galvanized and hopeful and watching other people be gal galvanized. And I don't know, mm -hmm. I can't speak for anyone else being hopeful necessarily, but just like, there's so many issues that were already present that this is bringing to the surface. And so what's the potential for, you know, I'm not necessarily uh, an optimist to the degree that I think everything's gonna be different and we're gonna solve all the problems. Yes. But, yeah. There's a lens we can shine on those issues right now. And so I'm just really um, seeing a lot of folks mobilize around that. And and a lot of folks kind of have a come to Jesus moment around it too. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're not paying attention, you know. Um, and at the same time, it's it's really frustrating that there are folks that are not having that moment. So so that's happening. I think, you know, at MCA, you know, it's a, it's a contemporary art museum in a huge city. And so one of the things as a way to answer, like, how is the MCA community doing? Um, I'm actually, you know, it's so many different communities and I'm trying, right. I think 
we're really trying to take the time right now to evaluate what those communities are or can be or how we're actually touching those communities and, and the ways that we maybe made assumptions about that before just being in the hustle and bustle of business as usual. So I would say, you know, this current moment is kind of pushing MCA staff to acknowledge like how exactly how urgent it is to actually reevaluate what we think that word community means. Um, and so for my team performance, which is paired with public practice, Mm -hmm. which does all the public programming for the museum aside from like learning focused stuff. Um, you know, it, it, it's really like, I think we're having a lot of conversations about not only like how do we do events and programs and connect with audiences and artists and connect them to each other, but actually like, who is it that we're actually trying to connect with and why, and how do we actually go back to our mission at this moment? So I don't know if I have an answer about the MCA community. I think, you know, it's, it's, but, but I do think that there's a, a lot of potential for, for reworking what we think it is. Well, it's good to kind of hear, um, you know, hear kind of how actually the community is communities and it's nuanced. And, you know, a lot of time we get wrapped up in saying we serve the community in this like singular thing. Um, yeah. But I think right now it's good to, um, to take a pause, take a moment and realize that there are, there are many communities um, and even the programming that we're doing, you know, I think a lot about this that, you know, at Kelly Strayhorn, we've turned a lot to virtual programming, um, knowing that each platform has its different types of accessibility, um, but also overall, it may not be accessible um, that much at all um, to many folks and, and our communities. Um, so yeah, just kind of touching on that, um, that, that there are multiple communities. But I also wanna go back to, um, what you were speaking about, about artist labor, about, you know, taking this moment as an opportunity um, to create a new. Um, and I wonder if you can speak to um, the, the document that you're working on called Creating New Futures, Working Guidelines for Ethics and Equity in Presenting Dance and Performances. Yes, it's a mouthful title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, there's a group of 10 folks and it's pretty equally split. Actually, there's more artists than presenters. Um, uh, although there are folks who fit into multiple categories, including myself. And um, I won't name all the names right now because I'm going to not remember. No somebody. problem. <laughs> um, but you can go to my Instagram handle and see <laughs> some information about it as my last post. Um, yeah, we just released some info about it yesterday, and it's a, like, 80-plus page document, actually. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, like, I bless the person that actually reads the whole thing, um, but um, I also hope everyone does. And <laughs> it, it really was an artist instigated, um, to borrow a, a phrase from the MCA's, like, mission statement or whatever, <laughs> an artist instigated... A project to compile perspectives and interviews and quotes from artists, but yeah. also a lot of the different like letters, draft form letters and um, strategies for ethical cancellation and mm -hmm. experiences of, of, of unethical and ethical cancellations. Um, together in one document. 120 pages, Jumatatu is saying, thank you, <laughs> sorry, I haven't read it. We changed the font last week, so it may be longer than it used to be. Um, 120, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Corey knew really messes things up. Um, but yeah, so it's, <clears throat> so it compiles a bunch of things, including, you know, a, a, um, some drafts that Jumatatu, you know, himself created as well as mm -hmm. Alan Johnson and stuff like that. So it's sort of like simultaneously a record of what's going on and a um, set of resources. And mm -hmm. then the artists who instigated it brought in a few programmers, including myself, um, really, you know, it was a hustle. And so it was sort of like, who do we know that will respond, <laughs> you know? So it's a very um, biased group in some ways um, or, you know, created out of personal networks. So it's limited in certain ways, but we also contributed a group, uh, uh, Yanira Castro, who really um, sent out a lot of these initial invites, mm -hmm. pulled together a group of presenter perspectives and the presenters involved in this core group then uh, pulled together quotes from that. And, and so it, it does include presenter perspectives. I think, you know, Janeiro was really astute in realizing quickly that having conversations in the future about cancellation, postponement fees, and also just like what a contract needs to look like after yes. this 
after we realized that like the acts of God language in a contract actually could happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, you know, what does that future look like needs to include perspectives of programmers, you know, and it's, it's not to discount the incredible power imbalances there, but there's also a lot of power imbalances amongst programmers for various mm -hmm. reasons. And, um, you know, between programmers and their leadership and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So how do we create, um, mutual understanding to some degree at least so so that document should come out this thursday fingers crossed and then we're having a convening next week i think the 15th 14th sorry sorry just read my instagram um that uh anyone is welcome to follow to uh to attend that abrams art center is hosting to kind of kick mm -hmm. off um perspectives being shared on it there will be a form that people can give feedback on the on the document and there will be the idea is really that it's a working document so more people will be brought in this original group will no longer be the carriers of it at some point um yeah so. and how can folks access it so it'll be available this thursday do you know how folks can access it yeah, there will be a link. Um, it'll probably be through Google Docs and there will be a Google form for feedback. Okay. Um, so it'll be probably a little complicated to like toggle between the document yeah. and the section you want to feedback on. But, you know, we're also open to take feedback on one section and, you know, from, from each person, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Anyone is welcome to do what they can. And, um, you know, really it's this feedback phase is about making sure we pass it on to the next group of holders with <laughs> um, information about what the larger set of communities needs from this document or needs this document to conclude. So um, it's, a, it's an ongoing record of what's happening. That's great. Thank you for sharing about that. That's yeah. important. Um, I also wanna you know, make sure that I touch base with you as an artist. Of course, you, know, you do all of your work also as an artist, um, but I don't know if you were in a, a development process, a creative process, um, you know, in, in this moment before everything was kind of shut down. Um, if, if you were, how has that kind of work continued or not? Um, I know that you have um, uh, been touring with Will Rawls and Claudia Rankin, and, and I saw that that's um, posted on MCA's site for folks to view that uh, performance on May 15, I think it is, um, yes. ready for folks to view. So yeah, I just want to touch base with you as an, as an artist in this moment. I love that. Thank you. Um, because uh, I, the touring with Will had really stopped <clears throat> at the end of the spring, almost a year ago now. Um, and so I was in this limbo period. I also did a piece with Janeiro Castro um, that had been created before we did one tour stop this summer. And that was kind of my last performance opportunity. I had a show that I was supposed to do in New York of my own, like a little show of my own work with Dance Hollow. And, um, and that was canceled, obviously. <laughs> not only because the show was canceled because I was not coming to New York. <laughs> right. And, and so that was kind of my last remaining landmark for my creative practice. Uh, there's a residency I was maybe gonna have here in, in Chicago. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, and you know, I am in a space of, you know, most of my life is my job and um, and PhD school, as I like to call it. And, um, and so there's a, there's not a ton of space at the moment for like, I really am trying to make sure those things happen and the PhD gets done and all that. And so there hasn't been um, time for me to really do my own work, which I feel like is where I need to be focused right now, mm -hmm. as I figure out, uh, you know, I'm still navigating the Chicago dance scene and who I might want to perform for. So I feel like in a weird way, my dancing has, um, I've been doing a little more of it now that I'm in my house all the time, just because I'm able to like, be in a space where I can do it. Like I'm not yeah. in an office all day. So yeah. I'm, like, go into the dining room and push the table outside out of the way and like mess around. Um, so I don't know, I'm curious to see what ends up happening uh, with yeah. out of that. I think, you know, it feels a little weirdly like more integrated into my day hmm. um, than it used to, which I'm excited about, but also like how, you know, so is having dinner 
every night with my partner that we cook. So that's not going to last. <laughs> <laughs> so, Some things so may once, remain. Some you never may know. Remain. I hope, I hope that the, you know, the, the work expectations like okay. allow for, that I can like hold on to some of that, you know? So, yeah. So there, what's that rhythm going to look like? I don't know. But I think, um, yeah. So, so the, the project, the Will Rawls project, you know, we have documentation of that and our amazing learning team is an interpretation team is going to, kind of host a conversation during mm. that, which will be really interesting. I'm trying to understand my artistic practice, um, similar to how we're all having to adjust what we think live is right now. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to understand my artistic practice as spanning, uh, you know, conversations like that, that will be with a public, you know, and I won't be performing, but it feels kind of like a show in a way, mm -hmm. like it feels like, you know, like I got to show up at a certain time and like some yeah. people say, you know, <laughs> like in the lobby chat or whatever. Um, yeah. So, so feel, I'm trying to rethink also what, you know, my Instagram video of me dancing in my dining room is not a show and I don't want to do that live actually for a reason. It, it feels like it would be different if I did it live, mm -hmm. but there's something um, that feels like exciting and urgent about seeing how people respond to that. You know, the connection with an audience is really different right now. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's, it's all, uh, you know, it's uncertainty. It's all a work in progress. Yes. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. I, there was, <laughs> I attended some discussion on zoom and um, there was a cultural worker in the mix and he pointed out, no, it's not going to be a new normal. It's going to be a new, um, yeah. like let's strive yeah. for a new. Um, and I keep, I keep thinking about that even with everything that, that you're talking about. Yeah. I, I had a, um, a big, conversation that I was on with a, way too many people on Zoom with a bunch <laughs> of cultural workers from Chicago, you know, and it was, you know, not just arts folks. It was a lot of different folks doing programming around the city. And someone said, you know, when we get back to normal and just right. then started talking about whatever. And I was like, hold on a second. <laughs> like, right. why is it that we think that we need to go back to normal? Like, what was so good about normal, you know? And and, you know, there's folks that can access our programs right now that wouldn't normally have. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, also just like people can connect with you who live in a place and that is not even remotely near here, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a question now of relearning what we value and how much we value, you know, all those different networks and how much we know about accessing them because mm -hmm. there were different rules before and now there's, you know, new ones. And there's some things that will, you know, get back to some idea of what it used to be but it's not actually about that it's about what's different you know mm -hmm. um yeah so and i think it's so hard for um for for so many folks the the just uncertainty and the you know unknown or unknowing not knowing um uh kind of being in this process of, of kind of learning yeah. together making together you know it almost is like we are all in a artistic practice together, making something. Um, and my hope is that we can, we can stay in that with each other, that we can be okay in that for a while more um, yeah. to get to yeah. something new. Um, so we've gone over the 19 minutes, which I love, and I thank <laughs> you for your time. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but before we end, I do um, have two last questions for you. One is, what's your advice for all of us? Um, for, you know, maybe folks in Chicago, for folks in Pittsburgh? Um, what are things that you're kind of turning to, um, you know, that's, that's helping you, things that you're thinking about? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've been thinking a lot about pleasure recently and, um, you know, the constantly hearing about deaths and um, loss of life and, um, and I'm also mm -hmm. simultaneously doing some previously unrelated research about the HIV AIDS crisis, but now mm -hmm. it's very related to what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I'm thinking about like how, how we understand our, you know, what our pleasure is, what desire is, and, and, and also what that, that looks like in your house or in your day, you know, um, for me, it's finding the brain space to, you know, right in a notebook for a while and cooking and, you know, having my tea in the mug that I love the most, you know, even though there's like eight different mugs I could choose from <laughs> because I'm constantly doing dishes for no reason, you know? So, um, yeah, just what are those small things and, yeah. and 
you know, I feel like that's to me connected to how life is so like we have we have no choice but to pay attention to how valuable that is and what that feels like, what life feels like really. Um, yeah, so that find your find your pleasure <laughs> that's <laughs> great that's great um and then as you know i began this role as the ed of kelly strayhorn on march 2nd so it's around two months oh. <laughs> um oh my God. and i, I <laughs> yeah i'm wondering do you have any advice for me um yeah. maybe for me as a new ed or for any ed too you know now yeah that's great Ugh. Mm. Um, you know, weirdly, I, I do and I don't. I, you know, came into a leadership role that's not an ED role, but, you know, had a large amount of voice and visibility in Chicago mm -hmm. and was co-leading in that role and then was not, was by myself in this role and, um, you know, and so I feel like that several months where I was you know, um, in this new configuration, I learned a ton that I was never, at, you know, I was, I was learning a ton about what leadership might mean. And very soon after, you know, within a, basically a, a year and a half after starting the job. And, and now I'm in a totally new structure. We've joined with public programs. And so there's a different network mm. of how the conversations and decisions get made. Um, but I feel like, you know, my strategy has always in, in new jobs, regardless of whether it's a hostessing job or a curatorial job has always been like, how much can I observe yeah. um, at the beginning and, and pay attention before like trying to shift things or, you know, roll with it. Um, and, and so, you know, just to, to really master everything that is already happening or was happening so that I understand how I fit into that and I feel like that's all the more, that's kind of like find your pleasure. Like it's all the more important mm. right now. And um, it's just like, how do you listen and observe and attend to what's going on and actually to do it in all directions, right? Like I think we have an, a, an impulse to like listen to the artists and the audiences we're, we're um, mm -hmm. responsible to. But I think there's also like a lot of listening to staff and to, you know, looking back through the archives of what happened before, even without listening to people, but like actually just like, what was this program trying to be, mm -hmm. you know, what was this institution trying to be? So I feel like that, you know, t and, and taking the time to do that is really hard. I, I would imagine in an emergency situation, which is what I experienced when I was suddenly <laughs> thrust into being the sole like leader of my team. Um, but I think, you know, it's like, how do you build slowly where that's, where that is possible? And I, I, I do think there's like this simultaneous thing happening right now where we have to be super urgent yeah. and responsive, but there's also a weird time lapse, time loss thing going on. And so maybe there's room there to listen and be attentive and like find little shifts and navigations and, and lay the groundwork for things later. I think every choice I've tried to make is at least intending to be the groundwork for something in the future. <clears throat> so yeah, and, and figuring out what those needed to be, it's like you're looking ahead actually like two or three years in a way. So um, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I, I appreciate that a lot. Um, yeah, just the idea of listening, observing, um, you know, taking time to process. Um, I appreciate that. And I think this is, um, you know, kind of a unique moment right now um, for not only me, but so many of us um, to, to do that. Um, so I want to thank you so thank much. You. Um, and if you have any last, any, anything that's, you know, on your heart or, or head that you want to say in this moment before I close us out. I'm good. This was delightful. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Again, everyone who, um, who has joined this IG Live, thank you. This is 19 Minutes with Joseph Hall, a weekly program um, at 1230 uh, with arts leaders from around the nation and the world. I was joined by Tara Aisha Willis, um, PhD candidate in performance studies at New York University and associate curator in performance and public practice at the Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago. Tara, how can people follow you? Um, my handle is Tara Aishist. That's T A R A uh, A I S H I S T, I think. I think it's two back to back A's. 
Yes, but, it is. Um, I have okay, it on my screen. Great, thank you. I can't even, oh yeah, it's up there. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, yeah, please feel free to follow that info about the um, ethical cancellation project is the, the last post I did. So you can find out when the event and the info will be released there. And everyone, you can follow Kelly Strayhorn Theater at KS Theater on Facebook and Instagram. And our website is kelly-strayhorn.org. Um, also, check out the MCA. Um, they have some great programs coming up. Um, all right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Nice to Bye. see you. Nice to speak with you. Nice to see you. You too.